In today's video, we're going to take a look at four different PC build guides ranging from $500 to $1,500. And we capped it at $1,500 just because once you get to that $2,000 to $2,500 price point, you can do a lot more with your hardware. You can go custom water cooling, you can go 2080 Ti uh, for the GPU. So for the most part, $500 gives you a really good entry level PC for gaming. You can do 1080p, 60 FPS all day with this build. And as you can see, we went a little bit over the $500 price point, but I'll give you good reasoning behind that. And uh, we have two $1,500 builds, one Intel, one AMD, just to give a nice balance between one pure gaming performance machine versus something that you can really multitask on at that $1,500 price point. But before we get to the build guides, I just wanna show you guys this. So 98% of you are not subscribed to the channel. Uh, and we're really, really close to that 1,000 subscriber goal. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. While you're at it, also subscribe to the channel. A lot more awesome content coming soon. Full PC build guides, build tutorials, tech news, really everything you can think of when it comes to tech will be on the channel. So be sure to subscribe. And getting into our first build guide, so we have our $500 build. So it ended up coming in over budget at $662, but for a good reason. So when it comes to that $500 price point, it's really hard to hit that mark with all new components. If you took this build guide and you replaced our 1660 Super with let's say a used RX 580 or a used GTX 1050 Ti, you could definitely get the, the price point of the graphics card down to probably $100 to $150 and knock the overall price down to $500 or $550. But with all new components uh, and a really, really great price to performance ratio when it comes to 1080p, 60 to 144 FPS gaming. This is a great build. So starting with the CPU, we went with a Ryzen 5 1600 AF. So this is AMD's refresh of their first generation Ryzen 5 processor, moving it over to the Zen 2 architecture at 12 nanometers. And it's a 3.2 gigahertz base clock and 3.6 gigahertz boost clock you can definitely overclock the CPU to around 3.9 gigahertz and get way more performance out of this six core CPU. And being that it is six cores for $105, the price to performance versus Intel is perfect for this lower end budget build. Um, considering that an i5 9400F or 8400F is around 200 to $250, this is a great compromise uh, when it comes to performance of six cores with the price at $100. And the other reason I went with Ryzen for this budget $500 build is definitely the inclusion of the CPU cooler. If we went with Intel, you're gonna have to spend another 35 to probably $50 to cool an i5 or an i7 CPU. So this gives you everything you need for your processor in one box and at 105 bucks. So going back to the build, we went with the Gigabyte B450M uh, DS3H micro ATX motherboard. So it is a micro ATX board, so you can fit it in a smaller, more compact case, uh, but you can also put it in a full-size ATX case like this one. We went with the NZXT H510, which is the perfect combination of price to a really, really good looking case for $70, which you really, really can't beat. Uh, and we went with the H510 for all the builds from $500 to $1,500 because it really works at any budget. It's a great, great case for the price. Um, but if you want to spend a little more or a little less on a case, you can definitely do so. But going back to our motherboard, so we have a Gigabyte B450M. Uh, so it's a B450 board, so the B450 chipset, uh, which will be perfect for the 1600 AF, but it gives us enough performance from the VRM for 1600 AF, even with overclocking, you should be fine using this motherboard. We have the 8-pin power for the CPU, uh, and we have our full slot PCIe by 16 uh, for the graphics card that we're gonna go with for DIMMs for the RAM. So pretty much everything you need in a motherboard for a really, really good price. And then going back, so in terms of the memory, we went with some Corsair Vengeance uh, 16 gigabyte kit. So two by eight gig DIMMs, uh, DDR4, 3200 megahertz speed, CL16. So really, really nice memory for a great price at $76. If you wanted to spend a little bit more on some RGB memory, you could definitely go with like Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, uh, same speed, CL16 as well, but probably around $85 to $90. But again, 
up to you depending on whether you want to go with the RGB look or if you just want to keep it clean with the Corsair Vengeance. And then for our storage, this is where we took a little bit of a step down to meet our price point. We went with a 240 gig Kingston SSD. Should be plenty for your OS, some basic games, a few software programs. If you needed a bigger game library, you could always throw in an extra two terabyte or one terabyte HDD or have an external hard drive with your game library on it. But for this build, it's really all we needed. And then skipping over the video cards, so we can come back to it. We got a EVGA 600 watt 80 plus certified power supply. So it's not a modular power supply, but it gives us plenty of wattage for this hardware. Uh, and it's only 60 bucks. So it's a great power supply. You could probably even save a little bit more on the power supply, maybe go with a 450 or 500 watt power supply. But I wanted to get enough performance in case you wanted to overclock the video card in the CPU. Speaking of the video card, we went with a GTX 1660 Super. So going with the Ryzen 5 and going AMD, we were able to keep the price down on most of the other components to leave us enough room to spend around 250 bucks on a graphics card. And like I said, if you wanted to save a little bit of money and get closer to that $500 budget, you could definitely go used with like an RX 580 or a 10th gen lower end NVIDIA card. But for this build, we went with the 1660 Super and we went with the Gigabyte OC version. So you get six gigabytes of VRAM, uh, a really, really nice GPU, uh, pretty much similar performance to a 1660 Ti, maybe a step down a little bit, but great performance for 1080p. Uh, probably 120 to 144 FPS in most games at high settings. Going into the details a little bit, so the base clock is 1530 megahertz, 1830 megahertz on the boost clock, definitely overclockable a little bit, uh, probably get an extra 60, 70 megahertz on that boost clock. And the memory is of course GDDR6, so you get plenty of memory bandwidth with this graphics card. And we have a 125 watt TDP on the card. So again, a great, great GPU for this level of system. Should be plenty for most games that you're going to run. So that does it for the $500 build and jumping over to the $1,000 build and don't really trust the numbers on this one uh, when it comes to the CPU and the overall price. So for whatever reason, PC Power Picker is bringing in the Ryzen 7 3700X at $89, even though it's a $275 CPU from pretty much Amazon, Newegg, uh, Walmart, any of those retailers it's around $275. So the price for this overall is around $1,050. So getting into the hardware and ignoring that minor technicality, um, we went with the Ryzen 7 3700X for our CPU. So we went Ryzen again for a couple different reasons. Again, pretty much the same as it was with the other one. Great price to performance. We're getting an eight core 16 thread CPU for 275 bucks. If you wanted to go with eight core 16 thread, either the 9900K or the 10700K on the Intel side, it's gonna be around 450 to $500. So this is a fantastic CPU for the $1,000 price point. We get eight core 16 threads, like I said, we also get a boost clock up to 4.4 gigahertz, which can be overclocked probably a little bit further to around 4.6 or 4.7 and a base clock of 3.6. We also get the included CPU cooler and it's the slightly better performing one for the Ryzen 7 series, but that's really all we should need for the 3700X. If you wanted to overclock, you might want to go with a third party cooler, maybe like a really nice uh, Noctua or Be Quiet air cooler or an AIO. But for this build, it should be enough. The CPU as is with the factory settings should be plenty for gaming at 1440p and 144 FPS. But if you wanted to get a little bit more out of it, you definitely could. And then for our motherboard, we went with the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard. So this is a very, very popular motherboard. It's sold out at Newegg, but on Best Buy, you can get it for 125 in stock. Uh, it's a great motherboard. We have really, really nice VRM for the 3700X. Everything you really need, an NVMe slot. It's pretty much the best bang for the buck motherboard when it comes to the B450 lineup. And with the introduction of B550, you could spend a little bit more and go with the B550 motherboard. Um, but those are again, very hard to come by. So at this point in time, this is probably the best B450 uh, motherboard for this price range. And same memory as the $500 build. All you really need for pretty much any build, whether it's Intel or AMD is 3200 megahertz speed. If you want to go a little bit higher to like 3600 megahertz, that's fine. But with the Corsair Vengeance memory at 75 bucks, it's really, really hard to beat. 
Uh, and then when it comes to storage, we want slightly higher capacity, but we also still went with an SSD. So 500 gig Western Digital. So for the extra 30 bucks, we could up our storage capacity to 500 gigs, give us a little bit more room for games. So let's say you wanted to download a game like Call of Duty, which is a 200 gig game. You could definitely do it with this SSD. But again, you could always go for that extra HDD, whether it's external or internal, and increase your capacity for your game library. Like I said earlier, same case, NZXT H510. But with the power supply, we went with the Cooler Master 80 plus gold certified 650 watt power supply. So we went with the 650 watt unit. So we could power the 3700X and our 2060 graphics card. Um, and if you needed to overclock both of those, you could definitely do it with this power supply. And getting to the graphics cards, we went with the RTX 2060 KO Ultra from EVGA. This is a perfect way to get into that entry level RTX level of gaming. Perfect for 1440p, 120 to 144 FPS, or possibly 1080p at 240 FPS. This card should definitely do that. And it gives you the extra added benefits of RTX when it comes to hardware encoding and other applications that you might use the card for, not just gaming, but for everything else that you're going to use on the system. And for $333 from Newegg and $345 at Amazon, it's a great price to get into the RTX 2060. So if you wanted to spend that little bit extra and go up to an $1,000 build, this is a great hardware setup for you. But let's say you had an extra 500 bucks and you wanted to spend $1,500 on a new gaming PC. We have a couple different builds, one from Intel, one with AMD, that should get the job done. So for our Intel build, we went with an i9-9900K. I was also looking at the 10th gen 10700K, but those are really hard to come by. But the 9900K does have a few extra PCIe lanes and some better cache. So the 9900K uh, is still probably the way to go. It's tried and true. You can overclock at over five gigahertz. And it's still really the CPU for gaming at a nice price point. You could even get it for a little bit less. So Amazon has it for 493 right now. I believe Micro Center has a sale on it right now for $415, uh, but it doesn't show up on PC Part Picker. And for our CPU cooler, of course, with Intel, you have to get a third party cooler. We went with an air cooler. I didn't want to go AIO. I just wanted to keep it simple with an air cooler, but we went with the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. So it's a big, beefy air cooler. And we still stuck with our 16 gig kit of Corsair Vengeance memory, which should be low profile enough for this cooler. Of course, being how big it is, it is going to sit over the RAM. So if you wanted to add RAM or you had like a random RAM issue, you're going to have to remove the cooler to access the RAM, but plenty of performance, a big, beefy cooler. Uh, for the 9900K and should keep it plenty cool whether you're overclocking or not. And for the motherboard, we went with an MSI MPG Gaming Plus ATX. So Z390 board, Z390 chipset for the 9900K. Uh, and it's a nice price to performance. It's $150 from Best Buy. And it's a great, great board. Um, you get type C, you get plenty of USB ports. So nice IO on the back and you should have plenty of VRM performance for the 9900K. And we also get two NVMe slots on that board. Like I said, sticking with the same memory, but with our storage, we do upgrade it quite a bit. So we go with a Samsung 970 Evo Plus, 250 gig NVMe drive. So a great performing drive for your OS or any heavily used softwares or games. And then we have the Seagate Barracuda two terabyte HDD, so for 55 bucks, we get two terabytes of capacity that we can use for gaming or just file storage, but are nice to have in a gaming PC. And then skipping over the graphics card again, same case, same uh, Cooler Master power supply at 650 watts, should be plenty for the hardware that we're putting in it. If you wanted to go a little bit more and go with a 750 watt power supply or an 800 watt power supply, you could do that, but this power supply should be enough for this build. So based off of all the hardware I just went over, Costs around 1100 bucks, which left us between 400 and 500 dollars for the graphics card. And we went a little bit over budget to 1600 with our RTX 2070 Super from Gigabyte. But you could spend a little bit less on the graphics card, maybe a 5700 XT or a 2070 non Super to get the price down a little bit. But the 2070 Super has a lot to offer uh, at this price point and will be perfect for 1440p gaming at 144 FPS. So with the RTX 2070 Super, we get eight gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 1605 megahertz core clock, 1785 on the boost clock, 
can definitely up the boost clock around 100 megahertz with an overclock. Um, and it's really the perfect card for this $500 budget for a graphics card. Uh, it's a really, really nice performing card, like I said, for 1440p or even 4K gaming. So that was our Intel $1500 build. And now to go over to our AMD build, um, and you're gonna have to weigh a few different options. So the 9900K with the 2070 Super pretty much gives you the perfect build for pure gaming. So you're gonna get the best core clocks on your CPU, you're gonna be able to overclock it to 5.0 or 5.1 gigahertz, and you match that with the 2070 Super, you're gonna be gaming really, really well. However, it might fall short in a couple different applications. So if your workload is using applications that require a lot more cores than let's say the eight with the 9900K, I wanted to put together a build with the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X. Again, ignore the price for whatever reason, there's a seller on Amazon listing these really, really low, but the 3900X is around a $409 uh, CPU. So if we up the overall price, it's around again, $1,600 for this build but we get a 12 core 24 thread CPU rather than the eight core 16 threads of the 9900K. We get a base frequency of 3.8 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.6. So even with the boost clock at 4.6 gigahertz, you're gonna see similar performance in gaming between the 9900K and the 3900X with the majority of the, the horsepower falling on the 2070 Super. Um, but we get plenty more performance with the extra cores for other applications and other workloads. And now that we're going with the 3900X, I decided instead of going air cooling, so we could have saved a little bit of money and went with the Dark Rock Pro 4 like we went with the Intel build, and that would have been plenty of cooling performance, but I decided to go with the Kraken X63. So we go with the 280 millimeter AIO for the 3900X to keep those temps down, being that it is a 12 core 24 thread CPU. And we went with the MSI MPG X570 Gaming Plus motherboard. Uh, so a really, really good VRM setup for the 3900X, and we went X570 rather than B450 or B550, uh, mainly for the performance of the board with the 3900X. You do have the, the fan on the chipset, so it might get a little bit loud, but overall, a really, really, really nice motherboard for the price, um, and will give you plenty of VRM support for the 3900X. We also get dual NVMe slots. We can slot in our 250 gig uh, Samsung NVMe, the only thing we do not get on any of these boards is a USB Type-C internal header, which is on the H510, which we went with in all these builds. So you won't be able to use the full front panel I.O. that the NZXT H510 has to offer. But if you went with an H500 or another case completely that doesn't have a Type-C connection, you'll definitely be able to utilize all of the front panel I.O. with any of the motherboards that are in these build guides. And aside from the CPU components on the motherboard, everything else is the same as the last build that we went with Intel. So same drives, same video card, same case, and same power supply. It's all you really need for any of these builds. So there we have it. These are some really, really nice builds for whatever price range you're looking to build your PC in. Of course, there's room to change out hardware and maybe go the different aesthetic that you might like better. But overall, the CPU, the GPU, the key components for the builds, these are definitely what I would go with. Um, you're getting really, really good price to performance with AMD while you're going for peak gaming with Intel. So depending on what you're after will depend on what CPU you go with. But in terms of the graphic cards, Nvidia has too big of a lead as of right now. So that is why I went with all Nvidia cards in these builds. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and this helped you figure out exactly what hardware you might want to go with for your next build. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, be sure to leave those below. Again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And definitely, definitely subscribe to the channel. A lot more awesome content coming soon.